mama mage nama adrian ni i was the officer in charge of the gang robberies branch of the criminal investigation department on the 25th of november 2019 dahana me i came to switzerland seeking political refuge i joined the police service as a sub inspector in 1993 and in 1997 on 1st of december 1997 i was attached to the cid o the criminal investigation department i was transferred to this department and from that point onwards i worked in many different divisions of this department i worked in uh, special investigation division uh, airport division uh, counter freight uh, currency division uh, as well as the gang robberies branch vishesh anse saha samuha mankola vimarshana anse wala currently vimarshana katiyutu wala i nilimi rajyakari katiyutu kala ma me wana vita by now i have carried out uh, almost 250 investigations in the criminal investigation department and i have carried out these investigations within the framework of law i was appointed the oic of uh, the gang robberies branch on uh, in march on 23rd of march uh, this uh, division looks into fake currency uh, gang robberies and other special criminal offenses viaj note sahara vishesha gane u aparadha sambandhin as a result of the investigations carried out by me regarding above such above criminal matters i was uh, the death threats were leveled against me and for the safety of my life i had to come to switzerland during the course of my investigative uh, work i have investigated into the death of lasanta manilal vikramatunga the abduction and the beating of keet noya and the abduction and killing of 11 individuals uh, by the navy navik hamuda buddhi nilari misin and kiri maha kappan in another instance the navy abducted two more people their vehicle was tawat pudgalyan dedenuku pahara dismantled into 72 parts and these two individuals were disappeared i looked i investigated that man in case uh, also i investigated the uh, gang rape incident of sivalokanathan vidya namiti taruniyam i have investigated uh, into the mat- uh, abduction uh, and disappearance of uh, journalist uh, pradeep eknali goda pradeep eknali goda madhya vidya ge pahara gani upalit ennakon and namal perera these are also two journalists uh, i've looked into the uh, abduction of these uh, journalists as well uh, in addition to that other investigations into crimes committed by the lgte are some of the Uh, criminal investigations that i have engaged in mage me aparadha parishana kaale tuladi ma visin sidu karu labwa thank you before we continue could i ask you to move the microphone a little bit away further from your mouth so that we can hear you a bit more clearly thank you very much um you've told us that you worked on the investigation of the murder of lasanta 
We understand that the murder happened on the 8th of January, 2009. Could you tell us when you were assigned the case? If I remember correct, 17th September 2015, the then Director General of the CID was SSP Nagamulla. He, I was at home and he called me at home and informed me. Uh, at that time, there was a Special Investigation Unit. Uh, so the Special Investigation Unit 3 was handling this particular investigation. He said that there is, uh, the, the investigative activities are rather slow. So I was asked that I should uh, take over the investigation with uh, Mr. Tisera. I uh, told him that I am not in a position to do that because... Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I was already uh, engaged in a number of investigations, uh, so uh, I declined, but the director uh, insisted. He said, you must accept it. Uh, so that is how I came to uh, join the investigation. If I remember correct, the date is 17th September 2015. Before you were assigned the case in September 2015, there were different police units that were involved in the investigation of the murder. Could you tell us about the first police unit assigned to the case right after the murder? On 8th of May, uh, January 2009, in front of the Malagala Primary School of Atidia, Mr. Lasanta Manilal Vikramatunga was traveling in a car when he was gunned down. This happened in the Mount Lavinia police jurisdiction. So the Mount Lavinia police was first in charge of the investigation. Then... The Magistrate Court of Mount Lavinia, under the case number 92 stroke 2009, uh, progress of the case was reported. After that, during the investigations carried out, the Mount La it was informed to the the, the uh, aggrieved party informed the Mount Lavinia magistrate that the investigations are by the uh, by the Mount Lavinia police uh, is very slow. After that, it was transferred over to the uh, criminal investigation department. At that time, uh, special uh, investigation unit number three was in charge of this matter. Within two months, that is, either in February or March of 2010, the matter was referred to the uh, TID, Terrorism Investigation uh, Division. And then in 2015, once again, the matter was handed over to Special Investigations Unit Number 3. I was serving as the OIC of the gang robberies branch of the CID at that time. My supervising officer is uh, currently retired, Shani Abhisekar. The special investigations uh, unit number three uh, had no progress. That is what they said. And as I mentioned earlier, Director Nagaha Mulla spoke to me and uh, SSP Tisera asking us to be uh, to support in supervising the investigation of this matter. So me and SSP uh, Tisera, we were from another department division. This investigation was done by another division. So there were some administrative uh, issues regarding how to handle this. Uh, 
So the then director, Mr. Shani Abhisekar, was informed, and the investigation, the entire case, was transferred to the gang robberies branch. This is how the investigation uh, proceeded. With a leave from the courts, the matter progressed. The Mount Lavinia, first it was the Mount Lavinia police, then it was the CID, then it was the TID. So, our investigation officers studied all of the extracts from all of these uh, divisions uh, before we started our investigation. And there we observed that, now first we looked at uh, this whole scenario. We looked at who Lasanta Vikramatunga is. Lasanta Vikramatunga is the editor-in-chief of Sunday Leader, a father of three. He had a press, printing press, which had been uh, arsoned, uh, harmed by arson on three instances. At one time, his uh, house was, uh, shots were fired at his house. Mr. Vikramatunga, before his demise, had... Uh, uh, we, ha- we also observed that uh, the, the DEN Defense Secretary uh, Gotabe Rajapaksa had received uh, taken an injunction against him, against Mr. Vikramatunga, uh, and uh, a group uh, riding motorbikes had uh, shot at him on 9th January, uh, on 8th January 2009. So this is what we observed from the extracts uh, that we examined uh, from the uh, activities carried out by the uh, sections earlier. From the Mount Lavinia, uh, from the investigations carried out by the Mount Lavinia police, we learned that uh, eyewitnesses to this incident, there are three eyewitnesses to this incident, Uh, sorry, there is one eyewitness and there are two other witnesses to this uh, uh, incident. In addition to that, Mr. Lasanta Vikramat, uh, whatever the documents uh, that were in Mr. Vikramatunga's car had been taken into custody as evidence, his mobile phone, his personal mobile phone had been found uh, in the possession of another person, which was done later. Uh, So we looked into that matter and uh, we came to know that... Uh, After Mr. Vikramatunga was shot, passengers, people who were walking by the roadside uh, had uh, managed to take him to the hospital. So one man uh, from among those uh, pedestrians had stolen the mobile phone. That is what we found out. In addition to that, the Mount Lavinia police had... uh, obtained uh, statements from the family of uh, Mr. Vikramatunga as well as other people known to Mr. Vikramatunga. The government analyst had been called to uh, as well and uh, investigations had been carried out. Uh, the post-mortem had been carried out by the JMO Mr. Su- Dr. Sunil Kumar according to the JMO report submitted to the courts. This death was a uh, death by shooting. Consequently, the Mount Lavinia police station on 27th of January 2009 about uh, 2 to 3 kilometers In a canal, uh, about two to three kilometers away from the uh, scene of crime, the police uh, find a a motorbike submerged in the canal. So it was taken out with support from the neighbors. And then uh, further investigations reveal that 
kasi pa na pa manaduri the bike Uh, uh, from the investigation found uh, they take a person from Vaunia into custody Vaunia is a place that is about 150 kilometers from Colombo so this person was detained and the Gal- the uh, Mount Lavinia police continue uh, their investigation matter investigations into this matter the ex- i uh, learned all of these uh, facts um, that uh, from uh, reading the extracts from that i received the, in, from the file uh, of the uh, mount lavinia police this is what i recall uh, from what i read we did not observe uh, any further findings from the investigations carried out by the mount lavinia police then the matter was uh, handed over to the criminal investigation division because the aggrieved party uh, mr vikramatunga's party had made a request to the courts and the courts uh, Uh, ordered the matter be handed over to the criminal investigation the 25th of October, uh, uh, November 2009 that is when the matter is handed over to the criminal investigation department after that let me just tell you a little bit about the uh, criminal investigation uh, department that is the utmost uh, and the most experienced uh, department in sri lanka looking into uh, criminal activities it is now usually uh, regional police stations aparadha if they have any unsolved uh, crimes if there are any uh, serious concerns and you know, if there is a major crime if a matter is very complex too complex they would refer it to the criminal investigation department once the criminal investigation department receives such a file the special investigation unit 1 would take over the matter and when as and when they continue their investigation aparadha paksha department wa galkis police bal police they would uh, analyze all the extracts received from the first party so in the matter of lasanta vikramatunga they had uh, received the details from the uh, mount lavinia police uh the uh, details uh, 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 statements uh, everything uh, is uh, taken into consideration so in uh, so this is done in vikramatunga's case so uh, it was found that oh uge seva sthane is atpidi pradesh the dakwa gaman marge cell tower information from all the cell towers from his home to uh, atidia where his work where, that is where his workplace in sri lanka we have dialog mobitel uh, and other service providers who provide cell service so cell information was uh, obtained oge from uh, from uh, cell tower reports were obtained from uh, all of these uh, cell towers from his uh, house to the uh, to his workplace in atidia fortunately the uh, mount lavinia police uh, station or the mirihana police had not uh, investigated uh, analyzed these uh, facts so the cid uh, analyzed this uh, information regarding cell tower, cell tower um, information from analyzing the cell tower data it was discovered that marna sthane dakwama on the road on route from lasanta vikramatunga's home to the scene of crime five other unknown telephone numbers were also traveling on the same road the owners of these cell phones were washin nuareliya pichai jesudasan of nuareliya magastota is one of the owners if i remember correct uh as far as i recall on 10th of december 2009 such a discovery was made by the cid after this discovery was made investigations uh, progress 
And I can't exactly recall, but in 2000, in, in January 2010, there was the presidential election. And one uh, candidate was Mr. Mahindra Rajapaksa, the other candidate was Field Marshal Sarat Fonseca. After the election, after the presidential election, uh, Mr. Mahindra Rajapaksa became the president. And the administration of the CID was assigned to make, uh, Mr. Kirti Gajanayaka. If you look at the structure of the CID, you have the IGP, then you have the director CID, and then you have other government officials, and then you have OICs, uh, then police constables. This is the structure that you have in the CID. But this, after this election, presidential election, Dire, uh, a supervisor of the uh, state intelligence uh, unit and also a former director of the CID, Mr. Kirti Gajanayaka, was made the C was made uh, for started functioning as the senior DIG of the C uh, criminal investigation department. And uh, uh, Me and my uh, team were now looking into this uh, investigation. We uh, had uh, discovered we had discovered some important facts about this uh, investigation. But Mahinda Balasoria, the then IGP, ordered. They said they claimed that it is under the IGP's or IGP's orders. Uh, Mr. Kirti Gajanayaka. Transferred the whole investigation into the Terrorism Investigation Division, the TID. So, uh, I bring to your attention, uh, learned uh, judges, usual practice is that a case would not be transferred in that way. Usually, uh, uh, the CID gets cases that are uh, difficult for others to handle. But in this scenario, the CID, the case that was under the CID was transferred to another division. That is uh, different from the norm. So, another thing I noticed uh, simultaneously is that 23rd of May 2008, uh, abduction uh, and beaten uh, of beating of uh, the Mr. Mr. Keith Noya. Keith, this uh, particular investigation uh, was and also Upali Tenna Khan's case, who was also beaten on 23rd of January. So these three cases were transferred to TID. So the uh, our in, so our investigation uh, team had a question, had a problem, because now we had so many uh, cases under our purview, but only these three particular cases were transferred. At the beginning, we did not really have a clear understanding as to what's going on. So we are, uh, however, uh, we we checked as to how the TID progressed with uh, the investigations into these three matters. This is Silva, if you'll allow me. You've told us, before we move into your findings on the investigation of the TID, you've raised a very important matter. You told us about the investigation of Mount Lavinia police, and then you mentioned that the CID identified five burner phones that followed Mr. Vikramatunga um, from his home to his location uh, and, and to, to the, the location of the murder. And that you also mentioned that these five phones were identified as belonging 
to a gentleman named Mr. Jesudasan. Was Mr. Jesudasan approached or arrested by the Criminal Investigation Division after this finding? The CID did not take them into take that person into custody. So that is what I uh, was saying that the CID had an opportunity to uh, achieve some progress in the case, but the matter was transferred to the TID. So as I mentioned earlier, I would like to convey to this court that the CID is known, uh, is re renowned as a uh, division that uh, serves justice by uh, solving very difficult cases. Regardless of that uh, prestige, uh, this, these three cases were transferred to the uh, TID, as I mentioned earlier. So, the TID started their investigation and uh, we observed uh, the progress that they made. I would like to uh, speak a little bit about that as well. The director of the TID at that time was Senior DIG Chandra Nimal Vakista. He is currently the, he is uh, serving in the bribery commission. Back then, he was the, uh, back then, Chief Inspector Prasanna always was the OIC of the TID. Currently, he is the director of the TID. The TID studied the extract files from the uh, Mount Lavinia police as well as the uh, CID. That is what it is. What that is what is stated in their files. That is something I observed in their files. Consequently. Uh, if I remember correct, it was in two in February two thousand nine. That uh, the unknown uh, telephone numbers, uh, suspicious and unknown, the, there were five suspicious and unknown telephones uh, that were traveling very close to Lasanta's mobile phone. So these were identified uh, to be belonging to uh, Pichai Desudasan. And uh, if I remember correct, in 2010, he was taken into custody. I came to learn about it uh, by uh, studying their extracts. And then I observed from the files that a military intelligence uh, officer co also taken into custody and detention orders had been obtained to detain them at the TID uh, in order to continue investigations. So, uh, I uh, can also recall something else that I studied in the files. In 2010, in February 2010, within two days, military intelligence 17 members of the military intelligence unit uh, of, of the uh, from the Kohuwala branch 17 intelligence officers also were taken into custody arrested 
So now, regarding the arresting of 17 suspects, the uh, Mount Lavinia courts had not been informed of the uh, arresting of these 17 suspects. Instead, the matter was reported to the Alutkade magistrate. These 17 suspects had been arrested, uh, detained uh, under the emergency uh, regulations and they, in, on two occasions, uh, uh, they were kept for four to five days, uh, their statements were obtained and they were uh, released. By then, the Mount Lavinia police had... Uh, Identify earlier the Mount Lavinia police had identified an eyewitness to this matter. The TID however uh, there was no uh, identification parade carried out uh, with this uh, eyewitness. Uh, investigations into the case of Keith Noya and Upali Tennakon were also under the TID. Uh, I did not see, I did not uh, observe any further investigations into this matter, into the matter of these two files. From uh, studying the files, uh, I learned that no further investigations were made into the Mr. Silva, would you be able to clarify for us if there was, um, in your observation, any common link between these 17 officers who were arrested under emergency legislation? From my observations uh, and my later, uh, from studying, looking into it later, I learned that these 17 officials, officers, were field marshal. Security in the sec uh, were, were part of a surveillance team of field marshal uh, Sar Sarat Fonseca. They belong to the, later I found out that they belong to the Kohuwala uh, branch of the intelligence unit as well. Apart from Mr. Jesudasan and his 17 officers, was anyone else arrested? By the TID? In addition to J. Sudarsan, Kande Gedara Piyavansa had been taken into custody. The reasons given for his arrest was that the identity card of J. Sudarsan had been uh, misappropriated, used by uh, uh, Piyavansa to buy the mobile phones. So, Kande Gadara Piyavansa as well as J. Sudarsan were detained by the TID. They were also in the remand prison uh, while the investigations uh, progressed. However, no verifications had been done regarding the investigations. This is what I uh, observed uh, by uh, studying the files. And could you clarify for us how Mr. Piyavasar was able to use the identity card of Jesudasan to acquire these five burner phone SIM cards? From the consequent investigations, it was revealed that Pichai Desudasan is a resident of Nuarelia. He is a he repairs motor vehicles in a nearby location. So while he was working there, 
Kandegedara Piyavansa. He is an intelligence officer from the Tripoli uh, unit. So he... Uh, if I remember correct, Piyavansa... संबंधताव मीट और Can you pause for a second? We've lost the translation. My apologies for this. It seems we have a small technical issue with our translators. Thank you. Uh, apologies for the technical difficulty. I am back. I got disconnected. Mr. Silva, you were um, you were telling us about your findings. Please carry on. So, uh, as I mentioned, Piche, J. Sudarshan, and uh, uh, Piyavansa, they, they this is how they started th their connection. After TID questioned J. Sudarshan. They were able to find uh, the connection with Pia Vansa. So they got all, uh, they took him into custody as well. Now, this is the norm. That is how investigations are done uh, as far as my understanding uh, in, in the, uh, into these things. Uh, I would say this is the correct way to continue. Piche J. Sudarsan is imprisoned. Pia Vansa too is uh, imprisoned. J. Sudarsan is. Uh, J. Sudarsan dies in custody after that. Piyavansa. The fundamental rights case is filed claiming that Piyavansa is detained illegally. So, if I remember correct, uh, they claim that. Uh, the OIC of the Criminal Investigation Division the, at that time and the current director of the CID, uh, SSP Prasan Alvis. Wanted to connect Field Marshal Sarat Fonseca. That was the claim made. So such a appeal, an appeal was made uh, uh, to uh, and uh, based on that. Now the Pichai Jay Sudarsan has passed away and. Uh, Pia Vansa is now released. Further analysis indicate that Kandegadara Pia Vansa during the time of about one year he was in custody the even during the time he was in custody the military uh, um, intelligence uh, division had uh, paid him salaries and all other allowances uh, even during the time he was in uh, prison this is a very unusual situation because when a person is uh, charged uh, uh, with murder, how can he be paid uh, salary from the government? 
the mount lavinia magistrate that is where the magistrate court is where the matter of the uh, vikramatunga killing was taken uh, was examined uh, after uh, the identification of the 17 suspects uh, the identification parades none of these was reported to the mount lavinia police instead the matter was reported to an entirely different uh, Uh, court this can be done only with approval from the uh, uh, endorsement from the attorney general you cannot go and report to two different courts regarding the same court uh, regarding the same case but somehow the oic had done it could i stop you there for a second um i just like to go back to what you just explained to us and clarify one thing so you've told us that the terrorism investigation division arrested 17 officers connected to general Sar- sarat fonseca and they were released you've told us that the individual connected to the five burner phones that followed uh, la santa on the day uh, mr jesudasan was arrested and died in custody um was there any investigation into the circumstances of his passing in custody we were supposed we were going to do an investigation into jesudasan's death but there was not enough time i will uh, in my uh, explanation uh, the, uh, the you will see uh, how that came into being we never had the time to do that however uh, let me just uh, give you some more information about the tid we now we had established a link between pichche jesudasan and piyavansa so there is enough uh, suspicion to uh, take piyavansa into custody now 17 officials 17 officers from the kohuwala uh, division sarat fonseca had been now these are 17 army officers connected to field marshal sarat fonseca so what are, what are, what are the grounds on which these 17 people were taken into custody what were, what was the suspicion because uh, examining the files could not reveal any reason for suspecting suspecting these 17 officers on two occasions these 17 persons were taken into custody by officers who are not involved in this investigation after they were brought uh, in taken into custody uh, uh, no uh, so uh, we asked the uh, officers who take these people into custody we uh, and they said uh, oic prasanna alvis uh, asked me now these people are suspects they need to be taken into custody so i went and took them into custody that is the that is what the officer who took the 17 officials into custody said usually in an investigation the investigation officer will have to have a reasonable doubt to take that person into custody however under uh, 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 prevention of terrorism law or under uh, emergency regulations you can take people into custody but uh, you have to have reasonable doubt suspicion reasonable suspicion regarding a matter and tiena uh, evidence and facts as to why they were taken into custody must be entered as notes that must be presented to the courts and that for for that you have to have a very deep investigation but none of that had happened so i went and asked these officers who uh, arrested these people they just said i was asked to do so by the oic that is a highly unusual situation uh, people cannot be taken into custody in that manner 
So I uh, got Prasanna Alvis, I questioned Prasanna Alvis, Mr. Prasanna Alvis, and I asked him, when uh, did you start suspecting these 17 uh, individuals? What are the charges against them? Why is nothing there in the files about the 17 people? Then he said that the 17 officers... So it had been uh, Chandranimal Vakishta who instructed him to take uh, these people into custody. That is what he said. And accordingly, he had taken uh, these people into custody. So I told uh, Prasanna, how, uh, like, wh- why did you do this? They are, why did you suspect them? Even under the uh, t- t- uh, even under the terror uh, uh, PTA Prevention of Terrorism Act, uh, you have to have a reasonable suspicion, and you have to uh, note it down. It is not there in the files. And the, another point to note is that. Uh, the matter was, uh, everything was produced before the Alutka Day Magistrate, not the Mount Leavinia Magistrate. So this had some uh, contraventions as well as some fraudulent element, that is what I felt. So I uh, spoke to Mr. Vakishta. I asked, so how did you come up with these 17 people? What are the evidence? What is your suspicion? I wanted him to report. He said that the Ministry of Defense gave them, uh, sent the names of these 17 officials. At that time, Mr. Gotabe Rajapaksa was the Defense Secretary, uh, CNA, Chief Intelligence Officer, was a retired uh, Deputy General Hendra Vitarana. So the d- defense, de- 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 uh, Minister of Defense had sent this list. So I asked him whether the Minister of Defense had uh, carried out an investigation. So if they had done so, they should be sending us a file. These are the suspects, uh, please investigate. Uh, if they want an internal investigation, that is how it should be done. So the TID files, uh, from analyzing the TID files, I could not observe any such thing. So he said that Mr. Hendra Vitarana sent the list. So Mr. Kapila Hendra Vitarana, Major General, I asked, I spoke to him. He said, I gave the list because Mr. Vakista asked for it. So that is from that I realized that Mr. Chandra Nimal Vakista, Mr. Hendra Vitarana, Mr. Prasanna Alvis, they are all just passing the ball from one to another person. There was no reasonable explanation to what was going on. So I... So something I observed in their investigations is that they appear to be trying to uh, push the responsibility or the blame of this killing to a third party. If CID, if if TID took over the file from CID, they should be doing a better job than the CID. So I started my investigation five uh, about five years after the incident, but still we we were making much progress. But then after TID took over the case, they had clearly uh, taken time. They were just spending up, spending time without uh, achieving any progress. If, uh, thank you. You mentioned a number of irregularities in this investigation process. Could you tell us more about uh, the documents that you mentioned were found in the vehicle of Mr. Wicker, Wicker Metunga. In Pasua, the mama. I would like to explain those matters to the Honorable Courts thereof. I would like to proceed with the present one. In Pasua, uh, the investigation officers decided 
rather than investigating this uh, one, it is better to keep silent. And uh, the TID has stopped this investigation rather than investigating it further. And thereafter, we thought there should be a new mechanism to look into these investigations. Signals have gone weak. And we studied and uh, two other cases uh, with this case has been transferred to TID. The Geet Noel and Upali Tindakun both were abducted and those other cases. If I, if I remember correct, it was in 2016 March. The then director, Naga Mulla, was informed through a letter from me according to the informations from the extracts that I have gone through, I told and I reiterated that I have reopened those files. Sorry, the connectivity has uh, lost. The connection is lost now, so therefore the interpreter is not given. I think there is some technical. I would like to divulge facts to this honorable court. During the time of the investigation, perhaps for the judges following us online, we are having another technical difficulty and we expect to be connected in a few minutes. Okay, sorry for disturbing. Mr. Silva. Please accept our apologies for the interruption. Um, we lost part of your last answer. So perhaps we can go back to my last question and take it back from there. We had just heard from you about the irregularities that you noted in the investigation of the TID in relation to the 17 officers. You had also mentioned that there were another uh, uh, other irregularities um, in the investigation. And, and one of these other issues you mentioned were the documents that were found in the vehicle, more specifically the notebook that was found in the vehicle of Mr. Vikramatunga uh, on the day of his murder. Would you be able to explain to us um, what exactly were your findings in relation to the police investigation relating to this notebook? Hello. Hello. Mr. Silva? Oh, yeah, I can hear you. I understand that you're back. Um, if you'll give us a second for us to have our judges back. Mr. Silva, I understand that due to the connection, we're going to proceed with you on audio and without a camera. So because of the circumstances and the, and the interruptions, um, I think that we're going to try to focus on the main points and the, the most important conclusions that you've reached in the course of your investigation and your review of the previous police investigation. Um, and one of the very important points that you raised, and I'd like to I'd like to get more details from you, relates to the affiliation of Mr. Piawasa, who, as you mentioned, was the individual who worked for the military intelligence unit that you called 
the Tripoli platoon. Could you explain to us a little bit more what is the Tripoli platoon and what was their role? Tripoli uh, platoon ne ka e dawasala pihitavala tibbe kolamba ata maradana kolambu 8 in a yuda hamudawata baragat good army or navy building mage vimarshane anuwa according to my investigation i studied anawarne karunu anuwa tripoli platoon eke Kande Gider Piavansa is one of the members of the Tripoli platoon. There was a major called Bulatwata in that platoon. There are about 20 to 25 members connected to that platoon and they were serving there. Uh, this is, these are the facts that we have, we were able to divulge from that party, and there are about, uh, that is all about the Tripoli platoon. According to the investigations carried out by the Mount Lavinia police, the JMO's report. And the government analysis report have been referred to the Mount Lavinia magistrate. According to the government analysis report, and there were no evidence to say that it was due to a bullet injury or gunshot that Lasant had to meet the death. Thereafter, we tried to recall another report from Sunil Kumar, who is the JMO. And thereafter, we inquired the JMO as to what uh, caused him to show the reasons. And he came down to say that there should be some uh, bullet, bullets or empty bullet packets near the car or there must be some uh, shots driven to the doors or any other parts of the car. And there were no such incidents or such signals or such uh, witness found. And therefore, but it was on... It was only the Kalubovila hospital which has uh, come out to say that uh, this is due to a gunshot injury. But the government analysis has uh, come out to say that there were no gunshot injuries. According to this, and what caused love? Then how Vasant was assassinated or how did he die? Is this was these were our questions, and thereafter we had to suspect these officers, and accordingly we made our reports. And thereafter, the buried body of Lasanta Victima Singh was excavated, and thereafter it was given to another three expert doctors. And there were, and it was found that uh, his skull was injured due to a gunshot injury, and therefore it was revealed that he was shot dead. And this particular JMO who was referred earlier has uh, done about uh, five five thousand post mortem reports. JMO reports. Then how uh, he, how this has been revealed? If this is going to be a problem. The Mount Lavinia police thereafter 
mama pera sandahan kara paridi the girl the mount livnia police has revealed that they have found a motorbike within the radius of 2 kilometers from the crime scene toroturu komada aave kiyala evakata galkis police thane if i may um i'd like if if you if you can for you to tell us a little bit more about the role of the tripoli platoon which we understand from your narrative is instrumental um to the murder of la santa could you please explain to us what is their role and what is the chain of command that they report to so who do they report to who do they take orders from I have already revealed that uh, parallelly with the investigation of La Santa Victim Singh, Keith Noel and uh, the other assassinated uh, journalists uh, also to be taken into consideration. I have also taken five important telephone, uh, mobile telephone numbers ජනවාරි මාසේ පළවෙනිදා ඉඳන් ඝාතන ලක්ුණු 2000 within the time span of uh, january 1st to january 8th i have take called for a report as to where these telephone numbers and references were contacted and their contact details were completely called from the telecom january mase 5 sa 6 this was uh, also revealed that uh, this uh, suspicious uh, mobile numbers have been used in the gampaha area and uh, they have come from gampaha to kalambu and that has uh, stopped in uh, maradana and later in the evening they have come to athidi area and we have searched more athidi is the place and residence where lasanta vikram singh lived and his residence was there lasanta vikram singh has not gone to gampa and during that particular period the lasanta's uh, numbers were not reached the gampa area but uh, these numbers have started from gampa belum mahara area and these suspicious telephone numbers have been identified and uh, when we were investigating these numbers we were able to trace further more numbers who were dealing with these numbers and referring to and they are after the dialogue company has informed us that these numbers have been distributed to the army and when we were investigating if the numbers are given to the army to which division of the army it has been assigned to and that was not properly divulged and thereafter we had some suspicious uh, thinking on that and uh, the numbers which are referred by the army were taken and purchased by on the name of pichai jesudasan and the other numbers uh, of the army platoon the tripoli platoon were all combined to each other and they were all traveling from areas each from the places that i have referred to on the january 8th by uh, 9 10 o'clock keith noel when he was traveling in his car he was stopped when he was trying to get down from his van and trying to go into his house the team which were traveling in the white van has stopped him from going home and he has forcibly abducted under gun point and thereafter oge birinda visin Krishant Kuri and Upali Tenakon have been informed of this incident. Now thereafter, they were informed to the uh, fellow journalist in that area. 
किशांतपुरे महता खरू जायसु एवकट राज्य परिपालन हा खरू जायसु दिन पब्लिक एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन मिनिस्टर खरू जायसु रे नमे कि वाज इन्फॉर्मड बाय किशांतपुरे एंड ही वाज इन्फॉर्मड अबाउट द एब्डक्शन ऑफ रॉयल कीथ and he has requested to serve him from being tortured ite passe me api karapu visleshana waladi hoya gatta keith noya mahata karu jayasurya the then public administration minister was informed about the abduction of keith noel jayasurya mahata visi evakata jana and karu jayasurya has informed mahinda rajapaksa the then president of sri lanka e mahata ge durakathana visleshane api visleshane keruwama ඒ මහතා විසින් එවකට රාජ්‍ය ආරක්ෂක ලේකම් වශයෙන් and the mahinda rajapaksa has referred this case to uh, gotabaya rajapaksa who was the then defense secretary in anuturuwa e link එක වෙනකොට නැවත gotabaya rajapaksa ට දුරකතන ඇමතුමක් ගන්නවා ත්‍රිශාන්තපුරේ මහතා උපාලි තෙන්නකෝන් is then uh, taking ලලිත අලහකෝන් was then uh, uh, telephoning Gotabaya Rajapaksa, and he was informed that Keith Noel has been abducted, and the army commander has to hold responsible for this. And as the defence secretary, the Gotabaya Rajapaksa says, "No, he has come out to say that is something referring to something connected to women cases. No, this is not uh, merely some other case. This is something uh, connected to women's uh, affairs. So that uh, don't uh, talk to me. That is what uh, the response of Gota Be Rajapaksa was." so thereafter the connectivity was lost anuru sena nayaka was as was also involved in this case anuru sena nayaka says anuru sena nayaka di aj anuru sena nayaka avil etanta kiyenawa lalita lahakon git kishantapura eta lalita has been informed that within 2 hours kitnayal will be brought back he has promised and thereafter nishanthi and the other team is visiting the particular police station and they are going to they are in laddan e pamil laddan to kishantapure mahatage paasale igena gatta the director general of uh, of uh, the dialogue uh, company is one of the classmates of keith noel and he has also come to the police station and uh, he has uh, he has come and told that uh, he is using my dialog uh, my company's dialog phone and i want to search him and the manager of the dialog company has introduced prema siri and says and they were trying to search for keith and they were dialog ek and he was informed the other members who were supporting keith noel has been informed to uh, they send sms and phone him frequently in thousand over more than thousand times so that uh, the tracing would be easy within the network according to the dialog manager etakota dialog samagamin kiyenawa and thereafter uh, the net dompe athara pradesh eka thamai thiyenne if you allow me to clarify one of the points you've made so you're talking about the investigation that you ran into the case the attempted the abduction of Keith Noyer another journalist um who was also taken and you're explaining to us um how following his abduction um the uh, Gotabaya Rajapaksa was personally informed of him being taken and participated and engaged to get him released um can you please clarify for us how he clarified that and in the sense of how as in who had kidnapped keith noyar according to your finding and and i would appreciate if if you could give us a, a, a brief answer so that the judges can have some clarity um on 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 the the chain of command and the authority um that we understand you're suggesting that Mr Gotabaya Rajapaksa had over these individuals who had taken Mr Noyer ma sadan kar paridi karu jaya according to my statement earlier 
Karu Jai Surya speaks to Mahindra Rajapaksa. Mahindra Rajapaksa speaks to Gotabe Rajapaksa. Gotabe speaks to CNI uh, Major General. And thereafter, uh, Amal Karunaka has been informed by the Major General. Amal Karunaka speaks to Bulatwata. At that time, Kitail was attacked through the phone, and according to Link, Keith Noel has been uh, not assaulted thereafter once that uh, telephone call was given to the person by Kothabai Rajapaksa. And uh, when we were observing this, we were able to think that uh, there is some connectivity with uh, the Tripoli platoon and Gothabai Rajapaksa. And it proves that some connectivity is there. And and how did you how did you observe this? What was what was the evidence that you analyzed to be able to identify this series of phone calls that ultimately result, according to your statement, um, in a phone call in an order from the then Secretary of Defense Gotabaya Rajapaksa to Mr. Bulatwate, who was according to your statement, leading the Tripoli platoon. Keith Noel's phone went off after his abduction. Esai Jai Singer, one of the team members of my NS team, and I have informed to trace those numbers. Uh, Tipoli platoon has certain telephone numbers, mobile telephone numbers. And the dialogue uh, company has issued some telephone, uh, mobile phone to the army officers. And when we were tracing all this, the particular numbers were traveling from a point in the area, from Gampaha. Right from Krishanta Kure, it went uh, through various channels and uh, at last it reached Gotabe Rajapaksa. And thereafter, Gotabe Rajapaksa has spoken to Bulat. Uh, well, and, and all these were controlled and it was under the responsibilities of the Tripoli Petroon. All these uh, reference numbers and the mobile telephone numbers and mobile phones were under the control of the Tripoli Petroon. Amal Karunaratna, the Director of Intelligence, has been uh, given uh, uh, some explanations about uh, these incidents to various other officers. And uh, that has, uh, there were also some references according to their uh, conversations that uh, this should be referred to the Field Marshal Sarat Fonseca and uh, Gotabe Rajapaksa has also uh, informed that uh, there should be some connectivities. Uh, with, uh, you should not, uh, uh, he has informed that you should not charge my Major General or Field Marshal with regard to the abduction. And he has also further informed. Yes. Thank you. Mr. Silva, thank you very much. Um, you have also mentioned that the Tripoli platoon was involved in the incidents relating to Upali Tinakun. Can you please very briefly, because the judges uh, have questions for you as well, can you briefly explain to us um, how they're engaged, um, how they were engaged in the incidents relating to Mr. Tenakun. Upali Tenakun's assassination. I think three persons were coming under face covers and they have attacked Upali Tenakun. According to the statement that I have already made, 
the telephone numbers which were used to the assassination of uh, Lasanta Vikramasang, Vikramasinghe and Upali Tenokon were used as similar to similarly they have uh, the numbers were similar and they were used in the similar way that was used for assassination in the early incident and also the police were able to trace the fingerprints Thank you. Um, could you please explain to us? Um, so you, you've told us that the Tripoli platoon is under the command of an individual named Mr. Bulatwate, and that Mr. Bulatwate reports uh, to the director of military intelligence, who reports to the chief national intelligence officer, who reports to the secretary, the then secretary minister of defense, Mr. Gutawaya Rajapaksa. Um, and, and these were involved in the commission of crimes, according to you, against La Santa, against uh, Keith Noyar, and against Upali Tenakun. Um, could you also clarify for us um, the, these police units that have been running the investigations, uh, for instance, the, the TID or this, uh, and the CID, uh, can you please confirm who they report to, what is the chain of command uh, for the police um, high-level officers who have been making these investigative decisions that, according to you, um, were irregular? Before I go into the investigation, the Colombo, uh, the Colombo CID division and the Colombo Crimes Division and the Dehivala Police Stations are collectively investigating this matter, and they were not able to find any confident evidence. At that time, the police were under the defense ministry and the defense secretary was then uh, Gotabe Rajapaksa. According to that, what uh, my investigations and the evidences and the witnesses which I have collected have gone missing and I have been informed to work according to the instructions given from the top authorities. Thank you very much for your answer. Um, this uh, this is my last question, but I believe the judges have a lot of questions for you. Um, so I will now hand over the floor to the judges. Thank you. I think uh, the judge Eduardo was the first one who indicated he wanted to ask. Good afternoon. Yes, Kalpana first yes, and yes. then you. Thank you very much, and thanks for for your testimony. Uh, I actually have two very, very concrete questions to you, and if you can answer very briefly to allow my colleagues also to make some other questions. The first question is, uh, during or after your investigation, did you hear an other hypothesis about the murder of La Santa? This is my first question. And my second question is, during or after your investigation, did you receive any pressure to do something or not to do something in relation to the investigation? Thank you very much. Uh, 
i would like to divulge to this wonderful quote garu adhikarite denum dena paridi the very recent incident to the lasanta vikramasinghe asannama sudhimu assassination was i heard about the sri lanka guwan hamudawata milata gan the lasanta vikramasinghe's media institution was divulging some facts about illegal dealing with the purchase of some aircrafts when i was about to do further investigations the sri lanka navy intelligence section the army intelligence section and the police top officers sri lanka yudha muda buddhi and uh, they all have started up uh, various investigations according uh, to the informations available mehidi in du- during 2018 didas Uh, there was a plot to assassinate me as well in 2018 in addition to that in 2018 if i am uh, if i remember correct it was in november 2018 under the presidency of mahinda rajapaksa I was transferred to the Nigambu branch CID branch and as the civil organizations and the journalists have raised against voice against my transfer the transfer was cancelled and I was re located to the former place navata CID ke ma darapu tanathura pat kerwa my tripala chief sena was instrumental in relocating me there again maitripala sirsena visi astuti bahasuti thank you i think uh, we we have several um, judges questions uh, and perhaps we should uh, put these questions all on the table at least three of them uh waiting to ask a question um because we need to uh, move on uh, unfortunately there's a lot of detail in your in your testimony um uh, very very important thank you so much for this detail um but uh i think we need to get the questions on the table just in case we don't get even in the time to get all the answers now we might get them later so uh, i think we have uh Judge Kalpana, no, you didn't. Um, Nello. No? Yes. For, from your testimony, we learned many facts and also some basic institutional aspects of this affair that are, for this tribunal, are very important. First, the multiplication of police bodies carrying out investigation that is not a good practice bad practice the overlapping of competent magistrates the covert work of the tripoli team and who is who was the political instigator of the, of these facts I would like that you deepen the role pl- played by magistrates for for uh, his point of view where they really engaged in the search of for the truth or they were afraid and how independent they were during this position position uh, in in their job This, this is my because the the, tri, the the tribunal is interested in this institutional aspect we can't we can't discover now the truth we we want to to understand the framework the institutional framework thank you uh 
Uh, Do we have any other question we want to get on the floor um, from the judges who are remote? Marina? Yes, please. Um, I would like to thank uh, uh, Mr. Silva, first of all, for his um, testimony. And I would like to ask him if he can answer uh, about the circumstances that prompted him to uh, to flee abroad, to, to leave uh, his own country. If he can, uh, I mean, if this is related to the inquiry, as I understand, uh, can he tell us about the circumstances that uh, forced him or prompted him to flee the country? Thank you. Thank you. Could we have the answer uh, to those two questions, please? A response from the, the witness. And thank you. I'm sorry that we're being pressed for time, but if you could make it uh, as brief as you can, there may be other questions too. Thank you. Mahavi Singh Sidhukarun Labu, Lasanta Vimat Vikramatunga Mahatage, Parishine di Anavarne Karnuanu. According to the investigations I have referred to, I, I think that they have been postponing these investigations purposely and there was an undue delay in processing these investigations. The CID has been functioning under the Defence Ministry. Then the Defence Secretary was then the Gota by Rajapaksa. Now, Lasanta Vikrama Singh has pointed out about the uh, MiG aircraft or MiG warplanes uh, purchase disorder and briberies. Uh, it was from 2015, the investigations have progressed. And uh, it was after 2015 when the regime was changed, when the, we were able to do some progressive improvement in the investigations. I have not come across any influence that have been used on the judges. But according to the information and uh, various other sources, I think there were some influences used by the then uh, president to curb this uh, situation and uh, he has used his influence in the appointments. As has been indicated already to the Honorable Court, I have to reiterate certain matters. 11 persons have been abducted and uh, they were de really demanded of bribe and if as they have not given the bribe they were assassinated in another incident a person was abducted and he was uh, cut into pieces 70 pieces were found in the car itself and that uh, investigation was not conducted in the Kagala district, uh, two persons were abducted to the Trinkwali naval bus and he they were assassinated. And thereafter, Lasanta Vikrama Sungu, Agnali Goda's abduction and killing, Upali Tinnakon, Geet Noyal's assassinations, all the persons were involved in the Sri Lankan Navy. There were some selected uh, groups and members who are involved in the intelligence uh, section, intelligence division. I am not blaming the complete, uh, I am not blaming the entire Navy members or the police or the army, but uh, there are certain selected individual intelligence group members and they are, the numbers were very least and they were a handful of people. They were involved in the assassination and uh, according to the facts divulged, uh, I think uh, 
මෙම සිය ප්‍රධාන වශයෙන් ගත්කම එම මා සඳහන් කරපු රවි විජේ ගුණවර්ධන and various මාණ්ඩලික ප්‍රධාන ශ්‍රී ලංකාවේ and high ranking police officers and the intelligence officers have been found involved in this and and with pressure with uh, pressure from the top there during the time when i was investigating there were some pressures ravi Ravi Senaviratna was uh, and uh, Director Shani Abir uh, Sekar have given me uh, two police officers uh, for my personal guard and I have studied that I was about to be assassinated by suspicious groups and I was precocious and with this uh, progress the then president Maithripala Sirisena I have given me a transfer during that time Mahindra Rajapaksa was there as the Prime Minister and I th- I was uh, I had some doubts my investigations were fruitful and I I was uh, really undergoing some uh, pressure from the top and I thought that uh, I will be in danger if I continue to stay in Sri Lanka and I will be sometimes uh, be abducted by the same officers and will be assassinated. I thought uh, this very firmly and I had to leave my country and come out from the country. If that now happened, I think there would not be a Nishanta Silva uh, to be speaking before this uh, court. Thank you. This is uh, a very important uh, information for us to have, and we understand your difficult situation personally uh, from going through this this work. Um, I I had a question also. Um, we did have some testimony uh, that was uh, relating to uh, La Santa's. Uh, uh, the reason for his assassination. Uh, you've raised the question of the uh, the MIG, the deals with the MIG and the other uh, military purchases. There was also apparently some suggestion that he also uh, wrote uh, an editorial some five days before he was killed uh, where he dealt with the question of the uh, the Tamil situation in, uh, in Sri Lanka. Do you... Th- do you th- did you see anything uh, of a relationship with his position uh, with regard to the overall political framework of Sri Lanka or only with regard to issues of corruption? I am not aware of the uh, uh, article written by him that you mentioned uh, concerning Tamil uh, persons. I can only give you evidence uh, regarding what I know. The closest, most uh, uh, closest reason as far as I understand for his killing is his revelations about the MIG uh, transaction, the MIG deal. So, uh, from my understanding, the MIG deal and the, his disclosures about MIG deals would be the uh, re- closest reason. And in that revelation, he names Gotabe Rajapaksa and his group, uh, his daughter, his brother, his first wife, his second wife, his family. They all state, Las Santas, they all state. Uh, that they are the, uh, that as the closest reason for his assassination the mig deal is what they cite aimsa vikramatunga his daughter 
had been uh, told by La Santa that I have that he has death threats. If I were to be killed, it would be uh, by Gotabe Rajapaksa because of the MIG deal uh, re- re- revelations. So if I ever give you a call and uh, say, uh, get ready with your bags, I will, uh, please don't ask questions, uh, get ready with your bags, we have to lo- leave as soon as I come to pick you up. That is what he had told. So in two such occasions, Lasanta picks up his daughter and uh, he hits her. So um, from the investigation that I carried out, from what I observed, the closest incident uh, uh, for his uh, assassination is the MIG deal. Uh, and also, in uh, in the investigation into Keith Noya incident, uh, direct, trip, uh, direct connections were made between the Tripoli unit and the, and the Gotabe Rajapaksa. The telephone and, uh, of the Jesudasan had been used in areas where Upali's, Mr. Upali's house House was and also in uh, areas close to Mr. Lasanta's house. The, this uh, start uh, from the Maradana Tripoli clam, uh, camp and then uh, uh, it continues. So there is reasonable suspicion that the Tripoli uh, the the person who had the ability and knowledge uh, to give these orders was Gota Rajapaksa. So I would say the closest uh, uh, incident is the revelations regarding the MIG uh, deal. Thank you. Were there any other questions from the judges? At this point? Yes, Gil. Yes, for you, Gil. I just wanted to uh, ask um, this this question of, about the Hambantota scandal, the tsunami charity, which um, in which the president got uh, a huge amount of money. Um, and I was wondering if, in fact, uh, that might have um, hurt hurt the president, uh, and 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 therefore he would have uh, been with Gota in finally deciding we've had too much. Let's get rid of this guy. I was just wondering whether the Secretary of Defense would have would have done it without his brother's, the president, uh, permission or agreement. I have not carried out any investigations into the helping Hambantota uh, matter. I can only relate whatever I learned from media. The... CID official, a reputed official from the CID, I, uh, Mr. Ampavila is the one who carried out this investigation. After that investigation, Mr. Ampavila was transferred. That much I know. Thank you. Is that is that all we have for? Okay, no other questions right now. Thank you very much to the witness here. Yeah. Thank you so much.